everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy Wednesday to each of you. Happy hump day. Whoop whoop. Yes, bringing you another inspiration, a full quilt top here. This is a single Irish chain. Now let me tell you, a cherub had emailed me and requested since i did the double iris chain if i would do a single and she also requested if i could put it in one color and not do it scrappy well heck yeah i can because this is so much fun so much fun now this particular quilt top does finish at 50 by 60 okay um and then um i use two fabrics this is navy on navy sprigs we have this in the shop and the background is soft white butterflies a navy on navy sprigs is by oh, let me look at my notes oh my gosh i can't even believe that i forgot oh, wilmington prince whoop there it is wilmington prince navy on navy sprigs soft white butterflies is from maywood studios both of those are in the shop this turned out fan tabulous now when we're talking about a single Irish chain, a double Irish chain, or a triple Irish chain, you always have two blocks that alternate, right? With a single um, Irish chain, you can do one very simply um, with a nine patch, a, a very standard nine patch. I'm gonna throw a picture up here. That would be your, in that picture, it's just a straight up three by three squares on a nine patch along with a solid print. But I wanted to put a little twist in it. I wanted to add something to it to make it just a little bit different. So I went to our famous book of Encyclopedia of Pieced Quilt Patterns, okay? And there are over 4,000 blocks in here. And I went to the chapter of unequal nine patches, okay? Or nine patches with a small square in the center or something like that. It's definitely unequal. And I went through, tr there's a whole bunch of them in here, but I wanted to still keep it simple because the nine patch is a great beginner block. And I, but I still wanted to add just a little bit of something. So I found a block called cross in the square. And I thought it was perfect and it's still beginner friendly so this block right here okay that makes this x is the cross in a square and this one is just a simple solid block no no patchwork necessary just a solid block and then we just alternated them now i want to share something with you i went and experimented and um, i'm going to throw a picture up here in just a second and I wanted, I thought about cornerstones and sashings in this, and I thought, ooh, that might be really cool. So here's a picture of that. I love this. When I do another one of these, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that one. And I will tell you, I'm gonna give you the yardage necessary, and it is in our supply list um, that I have put on our website, and I'll put the address here along with it down in the description box. It will be the top one because we're doing it today as of 2022 here in June. I can't even remember the date. I can't remember what, 22nd, I think maybe, I don't know. So, um, but it will be the top one as of today, okay? So I'll give you the yardage for this one. If you are a Be Inspired newsletter subscriber, I'm also gonna give you the yardage and the subcuts needed for the um, one with the cornerstones and sashing. So, Little bonus there for anybody who's interested because I think that qu that that quilt is a gorgeous. This one is too, absolutely. But that just added a little oomph to everything, didn't it? So, um, as far as yardage goes, I have to look. Okay, so the navy on navy springs is actually this blue is actually um, three quarter yard. I know it's hard to find three quarters, so you probably have to buy a yard of it and have plenty left over. And the white, the white according to EQ8 was two and a quarter yards. Um, my math goes just a tid beyond it, but it's very minimal. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't even know. Maybe um, it, it says 2.29 or 2.3 yards, okay? So I went ahead, I had plenty left over, especially I'm doing that math on 40 inch usage 
this white on white actually has more than that. But I know not every, or this soft white butterflies, I know that not everybody uses the fabric that I do. So I base it off of 40 inches of usage, you know, selvage to selvage, because there's so many variations and that's the standard math. So you may have a lot left over with two and a half yards. I will tell you two and a quarter probably worked out good with the soft white butterflies. I'd have to do the math. I just cut two and a half and I had plenty left over. So, um, which is fine for me because it's a great background. I can use it in so many places. So that's the yardage because we're only doing two colors. That is the yardage that you will need for both based on a 40 inch selvage or usage, not selvage, usage. Um, then if for binding, you'll need a half a yard and that's with a two and a half inch binding because I know a lot of you like to use a two and a half inch binding. Um, I actually might use a two and a half for this one. I might do two and a quarter. I'm still playing with that idea, but um, I'm gonna do it in, in the Navy on Navy sprigs for sure. But um, for backing and batting, if uh, you wanted a four inch overage, okay, so four inches on every side, now, of course, if you're going to send it out to a long armor, you want to make sure you talk to them and they can help you figure out the math of exactly how much batting or backing you will need. But your backing will be, um, and that would be with the seam running with the 50 inch line. Okay, so this way. And I do that because if I load this on a long arm, I'm going to load it so the 60 is going um, this way. <laughs> so I have less passes. <laughs> so my, my seam's gonna run that way um, so that it's actually horizontal and it doesn't get pulled as much. So that's why I do that. But it's four inch overage is going to be three and a quarter inch um, for your backing, okay? So that's all the necessaries. That's everything to get started. I will tell you, I'm not carrying this book yet, but I'm thinking about carrying it in our shop, but you could definitely find it. Oh, I'm uh, on the EQ8 website they do have it for sale there and they also sell the um uh, block bonus uh block something base block plus software along with eq8 which is a fantabulous software to help you design your own quilt so um both of them are, are wonderful i have all three of the, i have the two softwares and obviously the book and i would encourage even even to look for some inspiration, a lot of over 4,000 guys, over 4,000 blocks inside this book. And the base block plus goes along with the book. So you, all those blocks that are in the book are on the software. I mean, how, how brilliant is that, right? So <clears throat> at any rate, that's it. That's my spiel. And it's, um, it's time to get this, this beauty started. So I'll tell you what, I'll see you in just a sec. Let's talk about what you're gonna need first, okay? So you'll need two and a half inch squares, both in a light color and a dark color. I am choosing the white and blue, just so you know. And you'll need rectangles of two and a half by four and a half. Out of the whole kit and caboodle, if, for the whole entire quilt, if you're gonna cut all of them, you will need 135 two and a half inch of the blue, 120 of the two and a half inch white, 60 of the two and a half by four and a half and you will also need 15 10 and a half inch squares okay so once you get that all cut we're going to build this one block together okay so one block will take eight two and a half inch white squares nine two and a half inch blue squares and you will also need four two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take for one block, we're gonna take one of the blues and all of the rectangles and set them aside, okay? And the next thing we're gonna do is start to build four patches. And a four patch is simply a two by two square okay so what I like to do is chain piece but I'm gonna put right sides together all 
eight of each. Now, for those of you who are new, I am going to take you in and, and chain piece these all together. That's probably the only sewing that you'll see. However, we're going to go ahead and do that. So I will see you guys at the sewing machine in just a sec. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine. As you will notice, I do have my seam guide on board. I also have a leader ender, which I don't use in this particular uh, quilt a lot because I leader end with itself, but a leader ender will help the stitches um, be more consistent, uh, help with not getting things sucked down into those feed dogs and help me keep things a little bit straight. So we have right sides together, okay? And I don't, I'm putting the blue on top because we're actually going to press that way. It's just a preference. It doesn't really matter at this point which one you do put on top. But I am lining it up with my seam guide that is my quarter inch for this project. And uh, we'll talk about that here as soon as we're done. So we're going to chain piece that. So what does it mean? That means I'm going to feed without stopping. Now I'm only doing uh, seven with you on camera. But if you wanted to do all the two and a half inch squares together, or, you know, for the whole quilt, if you're doing the same size I am, then you would do 120 of these, okay? And you could just keep feeding them right on through. It will help speed things up. Okay, there's one. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and speed up this part of the video because I'm. it's pretty self-explanatory. The only thing you wanna make sure is that you are in fact making sure that your squares are indeed straight and lined up and pretty and ready to go. This one doesn't wanna cooperate, but I'm gonna speed the video up. Okay, so now let's take this right on over for the next step. I'll see you in just a sec. I'm gonna try and walk you through this whole thing. I've got some extra pieces already done. We're gonna walk through this entire block in one setting. Now I'm going back and forth between an ironing board and a cutting mat. So um, we may have some cuts, but I'm gonna try and walk through this whole thing with you to try and speed up the video for, for all of you. Okay, so once you're done sewing all of your strips together or your blocks together, you will have a chain. That's why we call it chain piecing. Well, that's one of the reasons, right? And it's a little piece of thread in between each one of them. I have this nifty um, thread. Um, it's a blade saver thread cutter. So I took an old blade and I and it goes in here you can find these in the shop and if you were doing 120 it is an absolute blessing and you just simply sit here and look at that simply just keep it going now <clears throat> at this point I want to tell you you will have here you'll have eight of these for one block okay we are going to press them towards the dark side towards the blue and I'm going to do that with you here in a second. This is a great opportunity. I would sew one of these units together and check your quarter inch seam before you do the other seven or 119, okay? Depending on how you want to chain piece all this. So this is a great opportunity. So here's what I'm going to do. These are your basis. This is where we're going to start getting the right size block, okay? You started with the cutting, making sure you have two and a half inch squares, and now we're sewing two two and a half inch squares together so we can check that seam. All right, so let me pull over the pressing board. 
this is a little better. I was messing with some lighting because I know this dark background likes to fuss with us. But you're just going to simply first relax your stitches by pressing over the top of your stitches. Why do we do that? There's a little bit of moisture in your fabric. Okay, we've got moisture in the air. Very natural thing. It's almost like a living being it is. And so by doing that, what we're doing is we're more relaxing those stitches. They actually sink a little further down into the fabric, but it also relaxes them. So when you go to press this open, now notice the dark side is facing up because I want to press towards the dark side. Whatever side you want to press to, that's the side you want to keep on top. So when I relax my seams first, what happens is it makes it so much easier to press this open, okay? <clears throat> so we'll do one more. Relax the seam and press her open. That is really all we've got, guys, for getting this done. Now I do have a clapper because I like to give it um, some time to get a little flap. So I'm gonna pull this away and we're gonna measure these Okay, and I'm going to show you as we go, I'm going to tell you the measurements that you should be getting. Okay, but this is a test. Remember, good time to test your quarter inch seam. So let's see how we're doing. Okay, so here are the two blocks that I pressed with you. We pressed it going towards the dark side. Okay, so now we want to measure them. When you put two two and a half inch blocks together, you should have a two and a half by four and a half inch rectangle. Okay, you want the line on the fabric and I'll take a picture of this so you can see it better. And then your two and a quarter inch should be along your um, quarter or along your seam line. I'll take a picture of that. Too. Well, it's the same picture. You'll be able to see the whole thing. So you want to make sure that this is in the two and a quarter. This is four and a half, and this is even on this side. I do see a little bit of issue going on here with this one. So we're just going to trim it just a little. It's just a hair. I'm just a hair off, probably in the sewing. I am going to, I think there's a little bit up here. This is real life, guys. Whoop. Okay, whoop, nope, that's not right. There we go. Nope, that's not right either. There we go. There we go. These are your foundations, okay? So you wanna make sure that everything is good to go. And this one looks fantabulous. Okay, so once you have, if, you're, if your quarter inch seam is off, this is a good time to adjust before you sew all of your two and a half inch squares together, okay? So you can see how we're going to get a really beautiful four patch, okay? It's important when you build the four patch that your, your colors are opposite of each other. That gives the contrast and the beauty behind the four patch. See how different that looks? So make sure you have all of them lined up like so. And then you're just going to simply put them right sides together. And because we pressed all of them going towards the dark side, your, your seams are simply going to nest beautifully, okay? Meaning that each of these will line up nicely with each other. And I like to just push a little. And I will pin, now I will tell you guys, my points are on point. You'll see that I had one that I missed and I had to redo, but that was a pinning issue. It was not a, um, a, it wasn't, it wasn't anything, it was me. It wasn't any other problem. It was completely me. So then I will sew a quarter inch line right through here. And what you're gonna get is four of these because you'll take all eight of these two and a half inch squares 
And I will tell you, I like to put the dark on the left too. You will have eight of these. So we're gonna sew those all together with a quarter inch seam and we're gonna get four of those. This is just for one block. Now, if you wanted to sew all these together, you're going to have a total of 60 patches for the same size quilt I'm doing. 64 patches all together. So let me pull the um, pressing board over. Let's get this pressed. Keeping this blue on the left, it's just, I like to keep things consistent so I don't get lost. I'm gonna relax the seams again. And this time, it doesn't matter which way you press, that's one of the beauties behind this block. It does not matter which way you press, okay? Um, you can press this way, that way, any way. You can do it any way you like, okay? Get that on there and let it rest. And now we're going to measure these because this is going to make or break you in your finished block also. So let me pull you back to the cutting board. Here's the block we just pressed you will have a total of four of these, okay? For each block, you will have four, okay? So, then when you sew all this together, you should have a four and a half inch squared block. Now, if your quarter inch seam is off again, or you shifted or something happened, um, then you may have to trim it. Yeah, I have to trim this one just a little bit. Okay, so what you want is you want the two and a quarter to line up here, the two and a quarter to line up on that seam. Here, let me pull some white fabric underneath. On mine, on my two, and there's a two and a quarter inch little um, squaring, okay? So that point I like to put on the point here. Now, why do we want to find the center? If you just lined up on one side and you were off by a quarter inch and you cut all that off, your squares will not be equal. Okay, so you want to find the center and half of four and a half, because it's a four and a half inch square, is two and a quarter. So at that point, if you needed to trim, and so I do, so let's just do this. Okay, I'm gonna go on one side. I'm gonna flip it around all the way, 180 degrees. If I line up that cut along there now, because I can, this should all still be the same. There isn't any really thing to cut off over there, but we did it anyway. I'm gonna turn it one turn and this time I'm going to pay attention to the top and bottom making sure those are straight this should be in the middle go ahead and cut one edge turn it twice again I can now line up one two three if I needed to three sides have been trimmed so they all should be equal okay and we are simply going to, your two and a quarter should be here, okay? And we're just simply gonna trim off that last edge. So all these squares are equal, all right? So you should have four of these. Once you have all four done, the next thing you're going to do is start to lay out your blocks. Okay, this is the fun part. I really like this part. I'm hoping I can get the whole thing in here. It's a 10 and a half inch square. So, okay, you have your four patch. One of your darks need to be towards the center. You're gonna take a rectangle. Actually, we're gonna start this a different way. We're gonna start with building the cross first. And this is, I love this block. I think it is so pretty. All right. So we have our two and a half inch square blue, two of our rectangles, two more of our rectangles. And if you had directional print, this would be a good time to pay attention. 
I have some butterflies. You can't hardly see them. I guess you can see them a little bit, but I'm just looking to see if they look upright. They're not all going to be because they're kind of twisty turny, but the next thing we're going to do is add our four patches, okay? So you want to make sure that you have your darks going towards the center, okay? This one's towards the center, this one's towards the center, and this one is towards the center. And what that's giving you is that X, all right? Let me turn the light up for just a second. So now you've laid it all out. Okay, you're going to end up making 15 of these, so just so you know. All right, what we're going to do now, it, we're going to make this just like a standard nine patch. Three by three is a nine patch, and we're going to take this rectangle and put it right sides together, and this square and put it right sides together, okay, and this rectangle and put it on top right sides together and if you got tone on tone like I do you want to pay attention completely to um, making sure you have the right side would it be the end of the world for this fabric no it's not trust me but um, it's nice if you can have them all there so you want to line them all up and you just want to sew make sure you're sewing the correct side okay you want to sew a quarter inch going down here a quarter inch and a quarter of an inch okay on all of these all right so that is the next step so the magic of video ta-da all right now I will tell you I started to press these a little different and I'm gonna change it up because I ended up finishing it in a much better way so this is what you should have once this quarter inch seam is finished. And what I'm going to tell you, I did not do it with this block. I did it this way several times and I figured out it wasn't the best method. Because I'm going to have shadowing a little bit. If you can see that, shadowing is when you can see a little bit of fabric here, okay? So what I'm going to tell you to do is press always towards the blue. This one I didn't do that, but I'll go back and correct it before I stitch the rest of this together. So what does that mean? Remember I said, whatever you want to be on top or where you want to press towards, I want to press towards this block. So I'm going to put this on top, okay? And then relax the seam. It doesn't want to go because it's already been pressed. And then simply press your block. And that way the seam will be going in that direction, okay? And you want to go towards the blue towards the blue towards the dark if you're not doing blue towards the dark all right the next step you're going to want to do is then you want to take your last row right sides together and see if you notice we don't have matching seams for this awesome 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 okay but you want to put right sides together for each of these all right and sew that quarter inch um, seam all along this side, okay? And please be careful that you're sewing the correct sides when you're doing it. So one thing I like to do before I take it to the sewing machine, I will clip which end I'm going to be sewing so I don't get it confused, okay? And I will tell you, um, this doesn't have a seam. This is just a piece of fabric that was two and a half by four and a half, right? So when I sew this together, I'm going to put this on the bottom so I can pay attention to this seam to make sure it doesn't flip. Okay. Now I will also tell you before we move to that next step, because I already have it ready for you. When you sew these together, this should equal four and a half by six and a half. These little guys should equal two and a half by six and a half, okay? So that, if you want to keep track to make sure you're still on board, I would sit and measure, um, making sure this is four and a half by six and a half, and these are two and a half by six and a half, okay? So all your, put these right sides together, sew your quarter inch seam on this side, and then you will have... 
That's the bottom. I can tell which one's which. Oh, no, I was wrong. That's the bottom. Okay. I'm only looking at my butterflies. That's how I can tell. All right. So did I sew? I sewed this one wrong, too. Um, press this one so it's okay because remember we're going towards the blue all right so when you do that you, when you add this one press towards the blue so you want to put this on top okay because this is where we want to press towards and press towards the blue so you should have three rows they're uneven that's an uneven nine patch okay very simply now, I will tell you, we are going to be nesting these seams. Now, I didn't sew this one all towards the blue, but just know that if you do that, these will go in, those will go out, and these will go out. So, they will nest, okay? So, I am not going to lie to you. At this point, I do pin, all right? And that's the key to keeping them all together nicely. Oh, before I pin... This should equal four and a half by ten and a half, two and a half by ten and a half, and four and a half by ten and a half. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top and I'm going to put them right sides together. I'm just going to flip it right on over. All right. I'm going to nest those seams nice and pretty. And this is just how I pin. This is how I get it to work. I mean, I've, these points on this quilt are gorgeous. Okay. And yours can be too. So I pin on the right of the seam and the left of the seam, giving myself enough room so that when I'm, I'll stop right before this, this pin, I'll go pull the pin out and I will go over the seam line. So I want to give myself enough room between the seam line and my pin for my needle to fall. Okay. Then I do the same thing with, there's two seams on this that you will nest. I'm going to flip it over so you can see. All right. And then, to be honest with you, to make sure everything stays nice and straight and it doesn't shift, I actually do pin the ends. Fabric is like a living being. It will want to do what it wants to do. So we have to make sure that it stays, you know, that it's got a good attitude and is compliant. <laughs> All right, then I will take it and I will go through with a quarter inch seam and I will tell you, I will do this with my seams facing, most of my seams facing up because on this side, we have those two and a half inch um, rectangles that are just fabric. So the only, the only remember I, I press this one different than I told you, go all, always towards the blue, okay? Towards the blue, towards the blue. Okay, <clears throat> when you, the only seams that you'll have to worry about flipping are these two. And you have pins to remind you to check the seam before it gets to the sewing machine. So I will put it this direction and I will sew my quarter inch seam. Okay. So after that is done, I'm trying to keep things organized because I got to sew all this together. This is what you will have. Got to love that. That's a great big piece. <clears throat> okay. Oh. Yes, isn't she gorgeous? Okay, so this should be a six and a half by ten and a half. Okay, and then we already told you this was a four and a half by ten and a half. So the only seam we have left, I mean, look how this is coming together. Isn't that cute? Super love it. All right, so then I take my bottom piece and I flip it to the right. Now remember, I mean to the top. So we have right sides together. Okay, now remember I told you press towards the blue. Okay, this one I wasn't doing that. Press towards the blue. Always press towards the blue. I just can't say that enough. Now again, we're only going to have two seams that need to be nested, but they will nest because we sewed in opposite, I mean pressed in opposite directions. So then I simply put one on the left. I put one on the right. Do the same thing over here. 
put one on the right. Put, it doesn't matter which way you do. Left, right, right, left. I think it just depends for me why I choose it. I don't know. I usually do right to left, but... And again, I will do the ends to keep this sucker in control, and I'm the boss. Okay. Some of you don't need to pin, and that's just fine. This is this is how it works for me. Everybody has their own method. This is mine. And again, I will send it through this way, because then I can watch these seams to make sure they don't flip, and the only two I have to worry about are these ones, okay? And I'll sew that quarter inch seam, okay? And then, Dun, da, da, da. we have our finished block okay now how did I press these when I joined these two to this strip in the middle I pressed them going out that way everything lays nice and flat and I won't have as much shadowing in between okay and as you can see I started pressing towards the blue see how everything's going towards the blue and then I press these all going out okay so that is your finished beautiful uneven 10 and a half inch unfinished because it's not finished till it's in the quilt 10 and a half inch unfinished uneven nine patch okay and you'll make 15 of these okay 15 of these and 15 of the plain 10 and a half inch square uh units and well let me just show you 15 of those okay and then we're going to lay them out so i'm going to see you at the design board in just a sec okay you've got all of your 30 squares at 10 and a half inches you've got 15 with the with the prints on there um you've got your uneven nine patch and you've got 15 of your solids okay so now you just start to lay them out and you just alternate. So I started up on there, up on the, let's see, it'd be your top left. <laughs> I went ahead and started up there with a print with the uneven nine patch, then a solid uneven, and you're just gonna alternate all the way through. It's this easy, guys. It truly is. And the beautiful thing, when you start to sew all these together, there's no nesting of any seams, okay? Except for the ones that we create with sewing the whole topper together. So how am I going to do this? Because y'all know I loathe long seams. Now I laid mine out five going across, six going down. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to want to create a horizontal, I have to have at least one long seam. So I'm going to create a long seam going horizontally because that's only going to be uh, 50 and a half inches long or whatever it's going to be. And then instead of going down, which would equal 60 plus, right? So I'm gonna sew a nine patch here and I'm gonna sew a nine patch down here, okay? And then on this side, I'm gonna sew a four patch with those two and then a two patch, a four patch with these two and then a two patch, okay? And I'll, <clears throat> at this point, um, I'll sew this six by two to this nine and this six by two to this nine, right? And then I'll put the two halves together horizontally. I know that seems like a lot because a lot of people just sew the rows together, you know, sew row one together, right? Then sew row two, put two to one. I just don't like those long seams. So I try to eliminate as many as possible. There's always going to be at least one, but that's what I do. Now, there's no nesting of seam. So when you sew this together, you have a couple of options and I haven't decided yet what exactly I'm going to do. Let's say you're sewing this block to this one, right? There is no nesting seams, but you still need to swip swap. So to keep yourself straight, you either want to continuously press to the uneven nine patch or continuously press to the um, solid. Okay. So if you press to the solid, you're going to have a little bit of shadowing, but if you press to the uneven nine patch, it's a little bulky. So you have to figure out where you're going to outweigh it. I'll let you know when I'm done sewing what I ended up doing, 
but I'm back and forth. If it's not too hard to press going towards this side, towards the uneven nine patch, I'll go ahead and do that. Because you're gonna have some shadowing when you go to put your rows together, you know, the tops and bottoms, basically, the horizontals. But if I can eliminate, I might, any real bulk or any real uh, shadowing. So I'll let you know when I'm done here. I'm gonna get this all thing together and I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, here she is, all finished as a topper, right? Okay, so I do wanna let you know that um, when I put the blocks together, I went ahead and pressed towards the uneven nine patch and it worked out beautifully. It personally just made it really, I think, fantabulous. Yes, and the other thing I wanna share is when I fed, when I was, you know, putting the nine patches together or I was putting, you know, these all together and I had more than one block, I would feed starting with the um, solid on the bottom of the underneath when I was feeding it into the needle. And that way I could watch the seams that were on the uneven patch because it would be on the top. But there would always be at least, there was always one at least, no always, because I would, I would make sure that I only had one on the bottom when I was feeding it. And when it was, I'm gonna throw a picture up here. I put extra pins, of course I pinned you know, the two pins at each seam, right? But then I, I put a pin where there was a seam. So I knew when it was underneath, it was a reminder of when it was about to hit, uh, once it went over the needle plate, because a lot of times my needle plate sits a little bit higher than the table. So my, when I, if the seam goes over it, once it hits that needle plate, sometimes it'll flip. So in order to remember, once it went, once that needle, when the pin on the side went over the needle plate, it allowed me to remember to check that seam and I went ahead and removed it once I knew the seam was going in the right direction. I have zero flip stitches in here and the, that's the reason why, because I had constant reminders, hey, check that seam, make sure it didn't flip when it was underneath, when it was on the bottom fabric going through uh, to the needle, right? So I wanted to give you a little tip on that, but yes, this was absolutely fun. Now it's interesting because when I see it in a photo, I will tell you, I do think, I'm not a border girl, but this would look good with a border. Um, I would use this blue fabric, this Navy Spriggs. I would definitely use that if I were gonna do a border. I'm not gonna do a border though, guys, because it does it does stand fine on its own. I do think a border would look really nice, and especially in this blue, allowing the um, pattern to really pop, but I'm good with it. I'm just gonna go ahead and do my binding in this color to give it a little bit of lipstick to help that pop just a little, but just so you know, this would make a great border quilt. Um, but I ain't doing it. I don't think it's like imperative that I have to have a border. So that's not where I'm going. So that's it for this week. I hope this was inspirational. Thank you very much for the cherub that emailed me in relation to this and getting it done because I love it. I think this is so much fun. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, but, and you can do it in any different size. I'm giving the fabric that you need for this quilt, right? But you could make it um, I mean, it's finishing at 50 by 60, but if you wanted a 40 by 50, you would just have to make four times 520 blocks instead of 30. So it, it could totally be, you know, worked around. You could do a 40 by 50 and then add a border. That would be cool um, to give you a little bit bigger. Uh, you could take this quilt by itself and make it bigger by either adding more blocks or adding that border. So it's got a lot of versatility for you to put your little spin on your own creation. So I hope this was inspirational. Don't forget to grab that supply sheet and don't forget that I will be on live today at 3 p.m. Eastern time because I'm here in Virginia. So don't forget about that. I look forward to seeing you. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, 
whatever your heart contents. Even if you just want to say hi, go ahead and drop them down below in the comments or see me today at 3 p.m. Next week, we will do a little something different with that crazy quilt. So I look forward to seeing you either at 3 or next week with another inspiration. So thank you all for stopping by. And until next time, may you continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful, never stop believing, and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. Happy quilting. Whoop, whoop. Happy Wednesday. See y'all soon.